Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in my name. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said this to you in figures. The hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures, but tell you plainly of the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from the Father. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again I am leaving the world and going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Thomas Aquinas was born in 1226. He went as a boy to Monte Cassino and as a student to Naples, where he joined the still quite new Dominican friars. After studying under Albert the Great, Thomas spent two three-year terms as Master of Theology in Paris. He died in 1274 while setting up a study house in Naples. It's amazing how much he produced in a relatively short working life, including commentaries on scripture, treatises on a wide range of subjects, and his summer of theology, a first degree course in theology for people who know some philosophy. He could write poetry. Between his two terms in Paris, he was at Orvieto, where the papal court resided, and there he composed the office for Corpus Christi, weaving scriptural texts into a rich tapestry. His hymns remind us how the Eucharist brings home to us the Son of God, who in friendship came into the world and became one of our family and gave himself to die for us and before leaving the world and going to the Father he left us his friends this wondrous way of being with us on our journey. Most of what St. Thomas wrote was lapidary prose. One reason for his immense influence is its clarity and the sureness of his judgments. Another is the masterly way he drew together scripture, the fathers of East and West, the church's decrees, Jewish and Muslim thought, and philosophical traditions. In particular, Aristotle's account of the complex human psyche helped him explore how God's grace, so to speak, takes flesh in the complex fabric of the human material. St. Thomas's thought has been likened to a medieval cathedral, probably meaning one like Salisbury, built in one go, symmetrical, complete, and watertight. But we should picture a more complex structure, still in progress of being built. For Thomas revised and fine-tuned his ideas, more than many have recognized, as he kept engaging with scripture. While writing his summer, he was still working out on the hoof how the Holy Spirit guides God's friends personally through his gifts. To develop the metaphor, the cathedral rests on foundations. Thomas was profoundly aware how the whole cosmos 
and each thing in it, all causal relationships and all activities are held in being all the time by God, who does not treat creatures like puppets, but gives them their being, their powers, their beauty, and leads them gently towards their goals. It's a mystical vision of God's presence in all things. And the cathedral has no ceiling or roof. It's open to the sky. The God who supports our being is also the goal who draws us upwards. We are created in God's image and for God because each of Father, Son and Spirit wants to give himself to us in friendship, to be known and loved, possessed and enjoyed, now and forever. As Thomas's journey of faith went on, he became more keenly aware of how none of the things we understand in this world give us concepts and analogies for grasping fully or domesticating the greatest mysteries of faith. While we are on pilgrimage, the scriptures and the sacraments feed us. Grace enlarges our hearts so that we already embrace God as our friend. But when we are raised to our home in God, then Jesus' promise will be fulfilled. The hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures, but tell you plainly of the Father. For then, in our home, the wisdom who feeds us now will strengthen our minds so that we truly live by the clear vision of his Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.